Why do you need a VPN router? Why isn't it enough to have a VPN? The explanation is coming up next. Let's start with the basics of cybersecurity. As you go around the internet, everything you do is registered with a completely public IP address. It's a little different when you're mobile and using cell data versus using your home Wi-Fi. When you're on the road, activating a VPN on your phone is all you need. Even if you forget, at least the IP address you use while on cell data is shared with others. So it's not completely unique to you. But if you're home, your Wi-Fi DSL connection has a semi-permanent IP address. Since this is assigned to you by your ISP, they have a record of who is currently using the IP address. It's like your ID card and you flash it around the internet everywhere you go. This IP address is not anonymous. As you've used your DSL over the years, third parties have been collecting a set of data points from your IP address. This is easily acquired since none of the data that I'm talking about are encrypted. Number one, location. This is accurate to six feet. Typically, this is done using Google's geolocation programs, which are built into browsers and all mobile devices. This is pretty hard to evade since you can't turn off the location tracking that's sent to Google itself. Number two, email address. Every email you send out from your home is paired to your IP address. It's in the email header and is sent out to the internet unencrypted. Number three, your name. Again, easily acquired from email addresses sent out from your IP address. This includes every email address ever used. It's also noted on non-encrypted sessions on social media. Number four, device fingerprint. This is a new technique that looks for uniqueness in a device that can basically put an identifier on any internet-enabled device. Folks, your data is being collected. These third-party data collectors, including ad companies, your ISP, the government, and hackers. All it takes is one match of IP and they can look you up based on the index of that data that I just mentioned to you. This set of data points are sold. In fact, many apps make money by selling this kind of data indirectly. The apps themselves don't have to worry about capturing the data. All the app makers do is allow ads in their mobile apps. The ads themselves do the collection of IP addresses and locations and fingerprints. The collection of email and IP address pairs is done somewhere else down the internet chain by packet sniffer programs, which read server-to-server -server email traffic. I have another video demonstrating this called email headers. These data points are collected passively. Anyone on your Wi-Fi is sending out this information. These could be your children, your guests, your Internet of Things devices, or like most people, your plethora of mobile devices and computers. It is very difficult to install a VPN on every device connected to the Internet and very difficult to discipline guests and family members to use a VPN. So you may be protecting yourself as an individual, but data is leaking from your home nevertheless, and other people are causing you to lose your safety. Your young kids could be downloading music and movies illegally without your knowledge. You find out later that you will be sued for copyright violations in a DMCA notice. Wouldn't it be better to keep this data hidden? All of us forget to turn on a VPN at home and we accidentally leak out information about our IP address, especially on mobile. This is scary since the trackers of our information don't sleep. Every move we make on the internet is detected. On top of it all, our ISP is watching and recording our traffic. When you connect to any internet resource, the router traffic is logged so that they know which websites you're looking at. Any DNS traffic is recorded as well, and any mistake is easily taken advantage of. Look at your cell phone data bill if you don't believe me. So how do we stop this? The solution is simple. 
Set up your house so that your default access to the internet is through a VPN router. The VPN router is just a regular Wi-Fi access point to your devices. But instead of being an open internet, it will route all traffic through the VPN first. To take a normal router like this Linksys here and convert it to a VPN involves buying this router, then flashing it with new software, for example, from DDWRT, and then configuring it for your particular VPN. It requires some expertise and lots of time. It's not something a non-techie person will do. Pre-installed VPN routers will cost you around 300 to 500 bucks a piece, and you may need more than one. Knowing this expense and because I'm already working with these devices, I actually wrote software to manage VPNs and Tor routing software on a cheaper Raspberry Pi. This is using my software called Brax Wi-Fi. This is a pre-configured router. It can act as a regular router. The Raspberry Pi has built-in Wi-Fi, so it's set up as a regular access point. It can be used as a VPN router, as a Tor router, or as a regular router. You simply connect this Pi to your existing router or DSL modem using a regular Ethernet cable. The software is automatically updated if you are connected to the internet. And it can be remotely controlled at your home. Here's a quick view of the user interface. It's pretty much plug and play. It will run immediately when plugged in. If you put a couple of these in different parts of your house, you can ensure that everyone is always using a VPN. You can still leave your normal Wi-Fi available for cases when some services block VPNs, like Netflix. But you train yourself to use the VPN router for everything else. This kind of setup requires a subscription to a VPN service. The default for this device is to use MyVPN, which is Byte's VPN. You will get very fast connections in the USA. We have USA-only servers for privacy protection. The links for the Brax Wi-Fi router are in the description. I hope you like this video and subscribe to this channel for more tech privacy tools.